Yo guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be doing a catch, clean, and cook video for you. We're gonna be targeting channel catfish today. Uh, our primary target range is gonna be anywhere from like 10 inches to probably 16 inch catfish. Those seem to be the best eaters, so that's what we're gonna do right now. Uh, we're gonna start off by getting some bait. We're gonna go and get some bluegill. Um, and that's what we, we are going to be using to catch these catfish today. So let's get right into it. All right, so I've got my few little bit of worms there that I took out of my worm farm. And we're going to fill up this white bucket here with some water. For when we catch our bluegill, we can put them in there. We're going to take a tiny piece of worm on a tiny mosquito hook. And we're going to toss it out there and see uh, if we can catch. I think we should be okay with five bluegill. We're probably only going to keep maybe one or two um, eater-sized catfish. And then we'll get into the kitchen and cook these bad boys up. So let's get our bait. That is step one. All right, there we go. Perfect. All right, so we just caught a nice, perfect-sized bluegill. What we're going to be doing with these guys is uh, probably cutting them in half and we're going to be using them as cup bait for these channel catfish. So I think probably with three more of those guys we should be good to go. lid on this so that they don't escape all right so we've got one bluegill so far let's catch a few more and we will be ready for step two there we go got another perfect size bluegill here it's going in the bucket I think we should be good with four bluegills. So let's get two more and we will get out of here. There we go. That's a gorgeous one actually. A little sunfish there. That'll be good bait for sure. We can actually cut three pieces out of him so we should definitely be good with one more bluegill. One more little panfish and we will be, we will be all set. And then just to show you guys at home what I'm doing here, very simple, tiny little mosquito hook, tiny little split shot. And all I'm doing is just throwing this on four pound test. That way you can get it out there a ways and it's very sensitive so I can feel when those bluegill have it in their mouth and I'm giving them the time to eat it. I've got one on right now. Oh gosh. Wow, I don't know how I didn't hook him. And I think we might be out of bait. Nope, we've got a few more pieces of worm here. Definitely enough bait to catch us our last bluegill. When you're using cup bait as well, guys, don't over harvest. I mean, it goes with anything. You might not think it's a big deal with bluegill, but you know, if you're taking fish unnecessarily and you don't need all of it, you're not gonna use it all. It's gonna end up dying in your bait bucket. Try to be mindful of that as well. So I know four minnows will definitely, four bluegill will definitely be enough. And look at the size of this guy. That's a really good sized bluegill there. Ouch. And he swallowed the hook, so we're gonna end up taking him. Ouch. We're gonna actually take him, and that's gonna be our fourth bluegill of the day. Sweet. Our mission is complete. Our first mission is complete, at least. We've got our bait, and now we're gonna go and catch some channel cats. All right guys, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut this bluegill right in half.
We're going to be using the head today. All we're going to do is hook it right through the top, just like so. And we're going to be th throwing it on a 20 gram uh, Raven float. So we're going to go ahead and try that and see how we do. There we go. Oh gosh. Get up here. Get up here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Boys and girls, we are hooked up. Finally. Yes. Woohoo. Feels like a good fish, too. All right, babe, so I'm going to walk him down that way. And um, can you grab that bucket in my uh, bag? You can dump out all that water. All right, everyone. That fish bit right at the end. Right at the very end of my drift. I was about to start reeling in. But I am glad I didn't. We've got this fish pinned pretty dang good. We're gonna walk him down over to the side of the river here and I'm gonna have to land them oh gosh this is a big fish let's go around this pole here Whew. my wife is with me today so what I'm gonna do is get the fish down and I'll actually pass the rod off to her and I'm gonna run down there real quick and try to try to land this beast and this will be our one fish we're just gonna take the one fish today uh, to do the catch and cook with I'm just glad we managed to hook into one he's a perfect eating size too it's not too big where the meat gets all gross it's a good-looking fish so we're gonna keep walking him down here he's pretty tired out now All right, everyone, passing the rod off to my beautiful wife. She's gonna be holding on to it. Just be careful when I run down there. Um, I'm gonna have you walk this way and then just bring the catfish towards me, okay? I'm gonna run down there quick. Let's go. Let's go. We got a fish on the line. All right. All right, we're gonna have to get wet for this, guys. All right. Woo! We have landed our catfish. Heck yeah. Check that out guys. He was just hanging by a thread. Look at that. Hook just barely came off. And that will be our fish for the catch and cook. Beautiful little channel cat. Ate the cut up bluegill. So this is it. Stage two is complete. Time for stage three. Time to get to the cutting board. We're gonna fillet this gorgeous little channel cat up, guys. Perfect eater size. Let's go. All right, guys, so the key to having a delicious catch and cook 
starts the second you land that fish. You gotta make sure you bleed any fish out that you're keeping. That way when you get it home and you start to try to fillet it, you're not getting blood all over the meat, you're not spoiling any of your meat at all. So what we're gonna do here is bleed out our gorgeous catfish and then we'll take them home. All right guys, our catfish is now bled. I took the guts out and threw that in the river. If you ever have the chance to open up your fish after you bleed it and kill it, if you ever have the chance to gut it when you're on the water, you should definitely do that when you're out on the river. All those nutrients are very good for all the fish that live out there. So, a little pro tip for you. Now let's get to the cutting board. All right guys, so we've got our gutted channel catfish here. And to fillet a channel cat is actually very easy. And the main reason being that their rib cage is right here. Like it comes, it starts very far back on the fish. So all you have to do is start right. You'll find that first rib cage there. And you're just gonna do one incision right through. One incision right there all the way through the back of the rib cage. And then you're gonna turn your fish around. All right, so you're gonna go right along the back side here. You're just gonna work your way very slowly, trying to feel that spine. And then you wanna stay in very close contact with that spine. You're gonna keep your knife angled and run that all the way down the back side of that channel cap. And sorry, I just got my uh, camera on the chest mount here. So. And then we're just gonna work our way down these ribs. Just like so. And just like that, you have your catfish fillet. So we're gonna go ahead and flip them over. And then probably the easiest part, I mean, you already have your boneless fillet right here. There's no bones in there at all. Now all we're gonna do is we left a little piece of skin on here so that we can just come in with the knife at a slight angle. And we're just gonna take that skin off. That way we can uh, fry this gorgeous channel cat and make a delicious channel catfish sandwich. So right here, you have a perfect, perfect boneless channel catfish filet. This right here will make two good filets Cut it right in half and you have two good, perfect fried catfish patties that you can make for a delicious catfish sandwich. So let's do the other side quick and we'll go inside in the kitchen and fry these up. All right guys, so this is the very final step of the whole catch and cook process. Just took a quick shower because it was very hot outside. Like I mentioned, it was 92 degrees today. So freshened up a little bit and actually for this last part, I'm gonna actually have my wife do the more or less like tutorial on how she likes to set up and cook her catfish. And we're gonna be deep frying this catfish today. So I'm gonna be behind the camera and we're gonna be going over to her now. So take it away. Okay, so first off, disclaimer, I'm not a chef. I'm not a professional in any way. This is just how I like to do it. Um, so feel free to change it up or do it however you like. So I have just some ingredients out here. Um, this is to bread the fish before we put it in the fryer. Um, and we don't have a deep frying machine, so we're just doing it on a stove, stove top. 
Um, so first is flour and I have seasoned it with a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika, and dried parsley. So you kind of um, coat the fish in the flour first and then I have two eggs cracked in here so we're going to scramble those up. And this is step two, so you would put the fish in the egg mixture after it's been coated in flour. And then for the third step, you're going to coat the fish in breadcrumbs. And then we're gonna set it on this plate and I'm gonna go ahead and start heating up the oil. So this is just vegetable oil. I'm just kind of putting in enough to cover the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to turn it up pretty high so that it gets nice and hot while we're doing that. We're going to get the catfish out. We're going to start breading it, guys. And it's going to go into our delicious oil here and fry it right up. Okay, so our oil is mostly heated up. So I'm going to start preparing the fillets. So I'm going to take them out of the paper towel here. I'm going to separate them. So obviously one is bigger than the other, but that's okay. However you want to cut it up is fine. So I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel and dry off the fillets so that all of the flour and everything sticks to it as well as possible. Okay, now we're gonna start coating the filet. So I'm gonna first put it in the flour. I'm gonna make sure it's fully coated. And sprinkle off any excess. I'm gonna dip it in the egg. Again, make sure it's fully coated. You want to make sure you let all of the drippage fall off. You don't want there to be chunks of egg on the fish. And then into the breadcrumbs. And then the same with the second filet. Okay, so now that we have both of the filets coated, I'm going to take my gloves off. And I'm going to use the tongs to lay them in the pan. And when you lay them down, make sure you lay it away from you just in case there's any splatter. You're not going to get hit or burned. You really want to make sure your oil is hot enough so you hear that sizzle when you lay it in. That way you know you're going to get a nice golden brown color. Oh, that looks amazing. And then you just let it sit and then after a minute or so you can kind of flip it just halfway to see how it's looking. And once it's a nice golden brown you can flip it to the other side, cook for another minute or so. And the fish is so thin, it cooks really fast, so you don't really have to worry about um, leaving it in long enough to be not raw. So you can kind of look around the edges too, 
for some clues as to how it's looking on the other side. So I'm starting to see a little bit of a golden color, so I'm just going to take a peek. That looks awesome, so I'm going to go ahead and get a better grip on it so I can flip. And then I'm going to go ahead, while it's cooking on this side, I'm just going to set down a couple of paper towels on a clean plate so that it can kind of dry off the excess oil. guys so while the fish cools down here I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera on my chest and I'm gonna start getting um, a sandwich going for you guys and show you how I like to eat this fried catfish sandwich style all right so while the catfish is cooling off here I'm gonna put a piece of provolone on it that way it can kind of melt and kind of start melting on that hot fillet while I assemble my sandwich all right so I like to keep it very simple got your burger buns there all I like to put on it is mayonnaise usually I do tartar sauce but I don't have any on me today so we're gonna put some mayonnaise on the bun then we're gonna grab our filet big old delicious piece of fried catfish then I'm gonna put a little bit of chopped up pickle on top of it all right I'm gonna put a tiny bit of pickle on top of that and then the very last ingredient we definitely need some Frank's red hot Right on top of that fried catfish sandwich. Boom. We'll just put the hat on. And we have one delicious catfish sandwich, everyone. So we're gonna go ahead, take a big old bite of this. Can't wait. Now that is delicious guys. Thank you so much for coming along today's video everyone. Showed you how to catch the bait, get your bluegill. We caught the catfish, we filleted it, and we got our end result, this delicious fried catfish sandwich. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Please subscribe if you haven't yet to the channel. Give it a thumbs up if you found uh, to like this video. And thanks for watching, everyone.